Yes, I got number. I don't know whether I should say congratulations here for the money or whatever that uh, we all are hearing. I know that they said uh, you you are planning or you are about to do. But the first thing remain is you know, it's that you guys is always talking about uh, palliative, palliative, palliative. But you know, it, this palliative of a thing didn't end well, eh? Because I've never seen the time that uh, mass is you know. Uh, try to like you know say something good about this palliative of it. It always end in sorrow. Many people die on the way. We saw so many video whereby people who are fighting palliative along the line, you know, some of them died. Now you you came up with a new idea of uh, you know distributing money fifty fifty thousand naira according to what we heard, which is not a bad idea. You know this time of hardship. Yeah, I can't say this is a bad idea of you giving the money. But then, no, that thing that is very important that you're supposed to put in place. Number one, full stop, bring it down. Because this 50000 that you are contributing or you are distributing or whatever, people will still use it to buy something that is expensive. The money will finish. But if, if let's say, I mean, you can bring full stop, bring it down, bring things down, because people are crying, bread of uh, 400 is now 1,000. People, they say the only rich people that can eat tomato. Tomatoes is very expensive. If you can do that one, because if I talk about this, I mean, security of the thing, I don't, I don't think I'm going to live here. Because if we can tackle this insecurity, farmers will go back to their farm. Then you will see now. Because we're by farmers, we, we are even hearing that some of the farmers, they have to pay money. They have to pay money for them to work in their own farm we have saw a situation whereby goat cows they are eating people's crops people food what they plant what they plant we see how they are eating it we can see how they are just destroying people farm how can tell me if let's say maybe you can invest in agriculture then there will be enough food as we are hearing that if you go in, in, in not they have so many land that is just a lavish people are not using it. if you can invest in agriculture then there will be a lot of food people will not complain because this money will finish this money will finish we have a lot of graduates who doesn't have job we have a lot of graduates whom their parents believe some of them their parents sold land sold their property believing that after graduating at least at least they will take care of them that is why you see we have a lot of you know crimes a lot of uh, things that is going on you see young, young guys, they join this uh, Yahoo, which even though I don't support anything, 419 Yahoo and whatever, because I mean, there are other things that you can do. But then, you know, just like they used to say, that an angry man, a hungry man is an angry man. You know, it came in a point whereby they look at themselves after graduating, no job. Then they ask themselves, what, what am I living? Is it not better for me to join, you know, people who are doing or commit crime? That's why you see a lot of crime come to Western War. There's nothing like that. There are places that you can go and collect food, whether you are working or not. So, I mean, I believe you can do more. Yes, you tried. Congratulations for the one you do. But, you know, if you can invest in agriculture, because people are supposed to eat. If people can eat, then they will have, they will think of. Check for example, if you are hungry, you won't think of anything until you eat. But whereby there is no food, food stock are very expensive, very, very costly. People are dying in hunger. We are not talking now about good schools. We are not talking about hospitals. We are not talking about, you know, some other things. We are talking now about food. People are hungry. People are hungry. Should, should I talk about this uh, minimum wage or should I talk about uh, for this uh, uh, removing of this uh, fuel subsidy, which has made so many families are no longer working? Boxes are there because they can't afford fuel. I don't want to talk about that. What I'm saying now is the hunger in the land is too much. Yeah, you tried by giving them this money. I hope they will, this money will reach them. Because all these things they, they've been promising and giving, it's always story. At the end of the day, we'll end in story. That's just the problem. So, Ogatinebu, please do something. If you can invest in agriculture first, that one will be okay. Yeah, I will say kudos to you for the little one that you have done. You try though, but is it going to reach the indigenous? Are they going to see it? That's it. Or is this all this? Is it a, a trick? You know? I don't know. Foul play or whatever. 
Okay, guys, let me know your comments in the comment section. Let's keep rolling. One look. And what Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach in your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <clears throat> we brought out a, a position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I come from a household where the kitchen table, if the things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a, pr a problem. The price of eggs, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems, that we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination that I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you have to take a look at all that was done in his administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we had a situation where we now, we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people, to $15 for, for uh, an insulin shot as opposed to $400. No senior has to pay more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can include beginning next year. In a situation that we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. So we're working to bring down the price of around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get done. And then say, so, well, every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929. By the time we finished, so we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a, a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, a bounce back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. They've been ripping us off for years like China and many others in all fairness to China. It's gonna just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously and give us a lot of power for other things. But he, would, he made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down and then they bounced back and he's taking credit for bounce back jobs. You can't do that. He also said he inherited 9% inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation and it stayed that way for 14 months and then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. President Trump, over the last eight years, under both of your administrations, the national debt soared to record highs. And according to a new nonpartisan analysis, President Trump, your administration approved $8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. So former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you say. With the U.S. facing trillion dollar deficits and record debt, why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cut spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID. And even after COVID, it was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was cut down to 21% from 39% plus beyond that. Uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country. The country was going like never before, and we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. 
we were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. We, we gave him something great. Remember, more people died under his administration, even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it, something which a lot of people don't like to talk about. But he had far more people dying in his administration. He did the mandate, which is a disaster, mandating it. The vaccine went out. He did a mandate on the vaccine, which is the thing that people most objected to about the vaccine. And he did a very poor job, just a very poor job. And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout the entire world, we're no longer respected as a country. They don't respect our leadership. They don't respect the United States anymore. We're like a third world nation between weaponization of his election, trying to go after his political opponent, all of the things he's done. We've become like a third world nation. And it's a shame. The damage he's done to our country, and I'd love to ask him and Will why he allowed millions of people to come in here from prisons, jails, and mental institutions to come into our country and destroy our country. Everyone from the United Nations Security Council straight through to the G7 to the Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the plan I put forward. Endorsed the plan I put forward, which has three stages to it. The first stage is treat the hostages for a ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no, the end of the war. The only one who wants the war to continue is Hamas, number one. They're the only ones standing out. We're still pushing hard from, to get them to accept. In the meantime, what's happened? In Israel, we're finding that the only thing I've denied Israel was 2,000 pound bombs. They don't work very well in populated areas. They kill a lot of innocent people. We're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. And by the way, I'm the guy that organized the world against Iran when they had a full-blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed, and it just stopped. We saved Israel. We are the biggest pr pr producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. And so that's, there, there are two different things. Hamas cannot... If we had a leader in this war, he led everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that... Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him, I'm not knocking anything. I'm only saying he, the money that we're spending on this war, and we shouldn't be spending, it should have never happened. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. You know, you know what is that debating, you know, Joe Biden and uh, Trump, guys. There is something uh, Trump is just, uh, you know, kicking, talking about migrants coming in. Um, I mean, Trump is like kicking against migrants coming in. He's just talking that migrant, that the border is open, that because of that, they have black job and whatever. That, um, I mean, that has caused the result of uh, United States, you know, economists not to move forward. And, uh, you know, she was, I mean, he was saying a lot of things. I kick against it. Even though that uh, I like Trump, you know, even though even you, if you put Joe Biden and Trump, I would choose Trump. I have many reasons why I should choose Trump, best known to me, you know. But then, he talk about this, the um, Russia and Ukraine talk about this Israelites and the Hamas, all this fights, war, which is a very good point. He said how um, if he were there, and I believe him that uh, there won't be any war, that since um, uh, Joe Biden came into power, it has been war, 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 and which is true because people respect U.S. so much. We believe that uh, with U.S., at least they can do something, and many accuse them of, you know, instead of them to do something, what they're doing is to supply weapon. And I do ask this question that this thing they're doing, uh, is it not... Sometimes when I look at it, I, I don't like thinking about it because we are talking about killing of human beings like you and I. 
to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Wow, don't forget to press the bell notification so that each time I post a video, you'll be notified. And if you're new in my channel, you're highly welcome. Thanks for being part of my family. May God bless you. Remember, put God first in whatever you're doing. And one that is left, there is hope. Never you give up. I love you. Give the video a thumbs up. My new subscriber, I embrace. I love you. Keep supporting your girl. My old subscriber, you guys are so amazing. My OG. Wow, and if you have not subscribed, subscribe and join the beautiful family. Guys, never you give up. One that is left, there is hope. Bye bye. One love. Subscribe. I love you. Bye. Peace on love.